Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Dice Theme Park, which is a brand new game from Alley Cat Games, which is on Kickstarter. Right now you can click the link in the corner there or in the description to go to the campaign page, see all of the final stuff. This is a prototype, but it should give you a very good idea of what the final game will look like. In this game, we are, as you might imagine, ferrying dicey guests around our theme parks. We start out small with just a few rides. We're going to be expanding, making it bigger, better, and pinballing those guests to as many rides as possible, as many rides as their excitement will allow. I'm just going to show you the standard game to begin with, but there are mascots and administrators to talk about afterwards as well. So we start out in a similar position. We both have six dollars, three movement tiles, a mascot each, uh, a standard base theme park board, and we each got given the choice of one of two tiles at the start of the game there. A last bit of setup I need to do here is to fill the monorails up. You see we've got three monorails here, and they are different depending on the play count. You'll have uh, more or less of them. They need to be filled up from the bag, but if you can see the numbers on the monorail there, the colours are randomly drawn from the bag, but the numbers are going to be set by the monorail card. And the higher the number, the higher the excitement of that visitor. There we go. So we're all set up now. So then we come to the action selection phase. We each have an identical hand of action cards and they have an ability on them that will take place in a certain phase of the round. There is an amount of money you will get for playing this card. We're going to pick two of them per round. And there is an initiative value in the corner. Now initiative is important because the lower initiative total that you have played the earlier you will go in a round if that particularly matters to you. So the abilities get better and better as you go along, although not necessarily, it depends what situation you're in. The money certainly gets better and better the higher influence value you play. But I could be thinking, you know, the, the monorail that's out there that's got a couple of blue guests on it, I went for an attraction that wants uh, blue dice, but that's the monorail that's got the most excited guests on it and Marty doesn't particularly care, he took a more generic attraction. So maybe we'd both be vying for that monorail. So maybe I want to play lower influence, except getting a bit lower money in this, but try to go first. At the same time as all that happening, Marty would be picking his influence as well. Then we reveal at the same time and the lowest influence goes up first on the turn order track and we take our money. So Marty would get seven from here we each get one from our park entrance. See, grey attractions will give you income. So I would get five, six, and that's it. Because Marty played more, so he would get seven, eight, but also the attraction he decided to start with gives him two as well. So he starts off with an extra 10. Then the cards stay with us for their abilities in the round. Then we have the acquisition phase. So in initiative order, in turn order now, we decide which monorail we would like to collect, which guests we would like to come into our park the most. So I took a hit in uh, in money and maybe special powers to get this specific monorail, but they go into my park entrance now and are just looking at the wonders that await them. Marty doesn't particularly mind as much, but he will take the ones that are a bit more excited. Now these guests aren't doing anything particular in these attractions at the moment. They are just in the queue. They haven't done anything yet. And this is important because, you know, the, the attractions tell you how many guests can go on at once, like the magic fountain here. You can only have one blue die on that at a time they can still be on the tile just queuing, even if they're the wrong colour and the wrong number, that's fine, but they just uh, can't actually use the attraction unless they meet the scoring requirements. After we've picked our monorails, we can build attractions. So I would get first pick again. We have the number of players plus one in front of us here. And what goes into your choice is the cost of the attraction. So the Cyclone and the Whack-A-Mole are four. The Madhouse up there is five. There is the colour of the attraction, because usually the colour of the attraction shows you the, the colour of die that it wants to have in there. So the Cyclone here needs a yellow die and then any other, but the number on the other die has to be bigger than the yellow die. You get three points for each activation. They also have different numbers of upgrade slots. Some can only be upgraded once, some can be upgraded twice, and they have different costs for that. So it's more expensive to upgrade these two than it would be for the whack-a-mole. The grey ones, as we said earlier, will give you a bit more extra income. So that's a plus. But also, there are these symbols on the rides. And if you get sets of those symbols, two, three, or four of the same symbol on an attraction, you will get a bonus. So I think I wouldn't mind getting the Cyclone, actually. Yeah, let's grab the Cyclone. It cost me four money. 
and go here because that would be my two of a set. When you get two of a set, you can change any die in your park to any value. It's not as impressive because I've got quite nice dice, but I will set that five to a six because if they go to zero and sometimes one, they will leave your park. You know, they're, they're too worn out. Their enthusiasm has waned. And then maybe Marty, Marty would just uh, maybe just keep going on his uh, on his grey hunt. If you get three of the same icon, you can draw a new die from the bag and put it in your entrance at value four. And if you get four of the same icon, you can grab an attraction from the discard pile and put it in your park for free. Next, we have the maintenance actions where we can buy upgrades for our attractions. Now you see that the park entrance here has two upgrades already built at the start of the game. So it's got a merch stand. Every time this gets activated, you'll earn two money and it's got a power generator. This means that the ride can be activated an extra time. Usually things can only be activated once. If it's got the generator, it can be activated twice in a round. And if you picked the worker that lets you activate a ride again, you could do it three times, four times if you've got an upgrade and two of this card, which we'll see how you can get two of the same card in a bit. You only have three of each upgrade though. The cost depends on the ride that you put it on and you have to have different upgrades on the same ride. So for my plan, maybe I would want to put a power generator on that magic fountain. I can't actually afford to do my aqua loop, maybe get some extra points for the magic fountain as well. So they were three each. So that cost me six. And Marty could do some upgrades on something that's better. Separate from all of that, you can also buy one extra movement token each round. A movement token will move a die one space in your park because you'll want them in specific places, especially as you get further into the game. A movement token costs $3. You can also buy an extra mascot token. In the basic game, the mascot tokens can be played onto a tile to increase a guest die or decrease it by one. And they can change the color of a die temporarily. They change the number permanently. The mascots are $5, so I couldn't afford anything. Maybe, you know, Marty, since he went for all of the money, could afford to grab some more movement. And then we have the activation phase. This is where everyone starts using their rides. And in a lot of these phases, things can happen simultaneously. You know, doing your upgrades, it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing, doing your activations. When you start out, you'll want to you know, do it separately just to make sure everyone's got it. But once, uh, once they've got the rules down, you can really just speed things up. So what I can do is activate my park entrance. So they go on this Ferris wheel at the park. They, they're still queuing in here. I'm just trying to give you a better view. So this guest can go on to the park entrance here when you activate a ride by having you know the the correct die in it and choosing to activate it uh, you are going to score those points you put a cube there to say this ride has been activated when we score it in a minute one of the guests that just used the ride has to move to an adjacent ride and everyone that just used the ride will decrease in excitement by one so this works for me because this guest can go over to the magic fountain, which wants blue dice. Uh, so they could stay in the park entrance. And as a matter of fact, I could just use the park entrance again because it's got a power generator. So put another activation cube on it and do the exact same thing. The magic fountain just wants a blue die on it. So we could just use one of these. It ticks down to a four, which is quite nice actually, because this wants a an odd blue die and an even gray die. Now I did upgrade the magic fountain so I could do that twice. So this blue die could roll over here and then I could use my mascot to boost one of them back up to a five. So now I've got a blue odd and then doesn't matter what color even. So we can activate the aqua loop, which is gonna be four points. Everyone ticks down one. So this goes to a four and a three and then someone has to leave. Uh, so I think it'll be the higher number one here because I can't do the park entrance again, but I can expend a movement token just temporarily to move this guest onto the mini train that wants yellow dice, activate that. Then they tick down to a three and move to a different attraction. And now on the cyclone, any yellow die and any other die that is a bigger number. That's fine, that's ready. So the cyclone can go on there. They both tick down, so it'll be a three and a two. But you know what? We could. I could just send the yellow two over there. Now I've got no more activations for any of these things. The only thing that could be activated is spooky forest and I've got no green dice or anyone anywhere near there for that matter. So can't activate any more. 
But next round now, no matter what new guests I get, the Aqua Loop is ready to be activated immediately. I won't go through all of Marty's as well. This was supposed to be a quick overview. I'm getting too into this. Uh, so now we, we score our things. So you can just look at the cubes that are on the rides. And so I can see that I've got one, two points. And for each activation, because it's got a merch stand on here, I also get two money. So I can grab two points. You can pop them on here to remind you that you have already scored this attraction. And then the Magic Fountain gets two extra points because it's got the special effects upgrade for each time it was upgraded. So instead of just one per time, it's three. So three, six points there. The Aqua Loop has no upgrades, got activated once. So that would be four points. And the Cyclone got activated once. And that is three points. So there we go. Now we've activated everything. We can take the activation cubes off and then just gather up all your points. So I've got three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, and you can mark your score on the score track and then pop the tokens back. In later rounds, there are objectives. You can play a short game, by the way, where you only have four rounds, but this is the full five round game. There'll be objectives later on that would get scored now. So you want the, the least amount of money, in a two-player game, the person who has the least amount of money after we've uh, added all the money we've just earned from activating our park, from activating our park, would get four points. And there's highest excitement, so you would total up all of the pips of all of the people that are still in your park, and most guests, so just most number of dice that are still in your park. There are also more objectives and the opposite of all of these objectives as well. You can't have the opposites in the same game, so you don't want least guests and then most guests, but they're all different options that uh, can be combined together. Now, if any of your dice happen to tick down to zero in the activation phase, they leave your park at that point. But now in the new round setup, if there are any visitors in your park that are at a one, luckily I haven't done that, any visitors at a one at the end of a round decide, you know, they're getting tired, they are going to leave too. So they would be removed from your park as well. Unless you brought in this worker, which will let you take one of those ones and put them back at your entrance at a four. There's also a worker that would let you move a guest to any other ride for free, doesn't have to be adjacent, doesn't cost a movement token, uh, make all of your mascots this turn, uh, do an extra plus one or minus one when they're activated, uh, activate a ride an additional time. And there's also get an upgrade for cheaper or take an upgrade off a ride and just boost a guest by two. And the other important thing that happens at the end of the round is that the cards that you played this round go to the player on your left. In a two-player game, you, you, would, you would just swap them. But that means you're going to get a different configuration of cards to pick from, not necessarily going to be able to play the same ability two rounds in a row, and might even end up with, you know, the same card twice in your deck. So you could just play both of those in there. So lots of variety, lots of different options going on there. We play through four or five rounds, depending on whether you're playing the short or long game. Later on, getting those objectives and trying to win them. Building our park up, getting upgrades, getting more guests in there at once, pinballing them all around. Halfway through the game, we will start getting the B attractions introduced, which have more complicated scoring requirements. They're more expensive, but can reward you with more and more points. You know, this Ferris wheel, for example, is so good you can't upgrade it because alone it's just worth eight points or the nitro that's a bit more specific with the color is worth nine points for being activated. So we play through five rounds. You get a point for every three money left at the end of the game and whoever has the most points wins. So that is just the basic game of dice theme park. There are also administrator cards that can let you have a, a special power at the start of the game rather than just um, being you know you're different based on the the ride that you started with but you can have your own special power so you would get dealt two of these at the start of a game and pick one of them. You can only use administrators by the way in the long game the five round game but um, this would let me you know, when I activate a, every time I activate a blue attraction has to be a blue attraction I can not tick down one of the guests that used it. Or this one is how many green attractions you activated this round, get some extra points. And there's also, you know, bring uh, one blue one back to your entrance every round. You don't have to have played that card to do it. Loads of different powers in those. And then there are also the mascot tricks. So we have this big deck of cards with all sorts of powers for your mascots. They keep their ability to move the numbers up or down by one or temporarily change colors of guests. 
But as well as having, you know, a display of attractions at the start of a round, we will also have a display of mascot tricks. So thematically, they're tricks that they can do, but they have special effects on the guests. You start the game with a mascot trick for your starting mascot, but also when you buy a mascot for $5, they come onto their trick card. And so you know that when you play this mascot, you can either just do its generic thing or you can do its special power. For the ones I've drawn here, Snapshot, if it's played onto an attraction that's got a yellow die on it, you can boost it by plus two, minus two, instead of just the standard amount. Even more, if you play that special ability card, special guest you play to an attraction and get two dollars for every green die on that attraction. Water Fight will get you a point for every green on an attraction. Flip a yellow die, pop this mascot on an attraction and then bring two guests from adjacent rides onto this attraction. Move a guest up to two spaces away, so many options. And I'm sure there will be even more to see over on the campaign page. So I'm gonna leave it there. You can find out more over there if you would like to see some of the final stuff. If you're not particularly fussed about what I think, no worries, I will see you for the next game. But if you would like to know, stick around. So what do I think of DICE Theme Park with the usual caveats of this is just a prototype. I was paid to make the overview video. I love DICE Hospital and plenty of Alley Cat games if you go back and look at my history. I know it's early days and that I should be more restrained, but I feel like this is my favourite and or is going to be my favourite when I get my hands on the final version. You know, it shares things with Dice Hospital in the ticking up and down of your dice in the starting off with this base and adding different rooms to the hospital or attractions to the theme park, getting different specialists in hospital and mascots in this with their own special powers that can influence the guests that you want as well as the extra tiles that you've got will influence that and the ways that you can play and just what you are allowed to do here but and as much as i love that puzzle of in, in dice hospital it's very much about trying to discharge as many guests as you can at the same time you can get massive points bonuses the more you can discharge in one go in dice theme park it's you know, incredibly thematically, is all about trying to keep these guests in your park for as long as possible. You know, every time it looks like they're getting a bit fed up of being in here, going to show them a mascot to boost their spirits up a little bit and just stay for one more ride, uh, put a bit more money in, get, uh, get a few more points. What at the start of the game seems like a, a cool but simpler puzzle of just, okay, well, I need this die here, so I'll get that there. Yep, I can I can make a little path to this suddenly kind of starts to explode as soon as you start to upgrade your rides and let them be worth more or be activated more times. But then the number of upgrades you can do is so limited, you've got to really watch out where you put them there. Although if you take certain workers, you'll be able to remove upgrades. So if you put them early on on your rides that you just wanted to get get guests off your entrance you know activating rides is as good as having movement things it does tick your guests down but it gets them moving around the park later on when you've got a lot of guests in your park maybe you want to try and keep them in the better areas so you'll want them to be able to be activated more often just this and i've I'm sure I've said it a million times already in the overview part, this pinballing of the guest between these rides that can be activated multiple times and just seeing that, oh, I've made a nice path of blues there, but actually any die can go in the mini train now, so why not have them go there next and now I can activate this and the yellow can go to this ride and maybe join up with these and activate this now and, oh, I haven't quite got the right dice for this, but I've got some movement tokens left over, so let's move them over there or I've got, I've got the tour guide that can let this die move two spaces in one go, so let's use that here rather than boosting up a die instead uh, i'll say that you know just just the the standard game has got loads of those elements in it i do love it the most when it's all turned on and you've got the the administrator is a nice little extra right from the start maybe giving you a bit of a nudge towards getting yellow attractions and guests for example but once you start getting your mascot tricks and getting more of them just like in dice hospital when you started getting your array of specialists and starting to see what you're really good at and how you can leverage all them the most it works just the same with having these different mascot tricks in there just how you can you can always use them for the for their basic ability of just boosting your dice or changing their color temporarily if you're really in a pinch you've got the set collection parts of the attractions that can give you great bonuses if you're willing to Maybe go a bit outside your comfort zone and get a, a attraction that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have gotten. 
but it might let you build a get another guest or build a free attraction so many parts of it can happen simultaneously as well so once you have gotten to grips with the game uh, loads of the phases can just go by really quickly uh, even simultaneously I say <laughs> I take a fair bit of time with the actual uh, activation phase but that's where all of the meat and uh, and most of the joy of the game is for me of working out where these are going to bounce next where I can get them in the best position to keep activating as many things as possible you know when we first uh, were learning the game and cracked it out and saw the the administrator that's what well, you want us to act, act eight activations for extra points how are we ever going to activate that many times and then you start to see oh it's because they're just going to keep pinballing backwards and forwards to these rides and if we have those right combinations of guests and we've leveraged them properly even early on in the game you can start to do loads of attractions i mean what did i do in that example i did like two four five six did i do seven activations just in that first round if you can keep the guests in your park and get them to the the further out areas where you put the the better and better attractions you can end up with massive paydays as the game goes on and i think it just works absolutely beautifully you know i was primed to like it i mentioned i love dice hospital i lost i'm sure entire summer holidays to playing the video game theme park but aside from any theming and predecessors i think the actual core of this game the core puzzle of how to get your guests where you need them how to get the most activations and points and how to keep these people in your park is so thematic and works so beautifully it's crunchy it's easy to get to grips with but there is uh, there's a wealth of options in there even before you add on all of those variable things that i told you about but there we go that is it for dice theme park i hope that gave you some idea of what the game will be like and whether or not you would be interested in it i'll say for maybe the million and first time <laughs> the campaign page is in the description for you to see all the, the final stuff if you'd like to see more from me hey i've made loads of videos you could see my multiple videos about uh I was going to say Theme Hospital, Dice Hospital, uh, which could be linked about. There's, there's like 450 playthroughs on this channel. If you'd like to keep, help me keep making more, it's uh, mostly supported through my Patreon account. That's linked in the description as well. But I've kept you for long enough. I'll let you go. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.